tonight, the blame game begins as tearful teens pay tribute to the Carlton Wall victims. Always had a smile on their face and just beautiful people. Police hunt a brazen sexual predator who attacked a woman in Coburg. And amazing race. An underdog takes out the country's richest sprint. And that is a great upset, but a great result. This is 10 News at 5 with Mal Walden. Good evening. First tonight, a man has died in an Easter boating tragedy in Gippsland. The man in his 50s drowned and another man is in hospital after a boat capsized off Malakuta. Police say the fiberglass fishing boat travelled through a sandbar at Bastion Point Beach when it overturned just 80 metres from the shore. Emergency services were called to the beach but were unable to revive the fishermen. Another man on board was taken to the Orbost Hospital. Two other passengers, a man and a woman, also suffered injuries. A building union wants to be included in all investigations into the Swanson Street wall collapse. CFMEU officials desperately helped in the rescue attempts and believe they should have an input into the probe. 10 Sarah Arbo reports the tragedy is causing a deep outpouring of grief among friends of the victims. They've lost their best friends, but these teenagers are banding together to find strength. Xander was always just the best kid and he always joked that he was going to run for Prime Minister. He's just happy to have footy back. So we've been waiting so long for it to come back. It's been fantastic. Ben Lewis, 10 News. Oh, I'm amazed he's taken time off to join us, but if while he's here, <laughs> Stephen looking ahead to tonight's sport. Thanks, Matt. We'll have all the highlights from the MCG as the Hawks try to snap their losing streak. Some good news for the Demons following yesterday's disaster. Lindsay Thomas controversially cleared by the match review panel. A day of upsets at Bells. Andy Murray's Miami Vice. And a Safa Powell may be injured, but his good mate Usain Bolt is flying. Next quarter's coming up in 10 News. Labor rebel Simon Crean attacks the feared superannuation tax. And a suburban turf war breaks out over a Melton driveway. Welcome back into some breaking news. Australian cricketer Michael Clarke has been rushed to hospital with severe vomiting as a result of a recent trip to India. Cricket Australia is about to release a statement on this and we'll bring you more details as they come to hand. The Australian Medical Association has rejected renewed calls for security guards to carry guns in Victorian hospitals. The leading health lobby says weapons would only inflame tensions in emergency departments. And the government agrees, saying it has no intention of arming guards. There are other ways to deal with this that will reduce the risk to both the doctors, nurses and the patients. A parliamentary inquiry last year recommended keeping guns out of hospitals. The superannuation industry has stepped up its warnings against what it claims will be a Gillard government tax raid. Former Labor leader Simon Crean is also warning against any retrospective tax on people's savings. Tense political editor Hugh Rimmington is in Canberra. Hugh, there's growing alarm in the finance sector and no doubt inside Labor itself. Well, that's right, Mal. Anyone in Labor will tell you that theirs was the party that created superannuation for all Australians, but that's cutting them very little slack at the moment as they prepare for a super tax fiddle. The whole situation made a lot more difficult. Just throughout Melbourne on all those major freeways, including the Easter Quarter, Prindus Freeway is looking good in both directions. See you after sport. However, coming up in 10 News, a massive pileup in the US leaves three dead and at least 25 injured. A botched back snatch caught on camera in Western Australia. And land limbo, the families locked in dispute over the state government's nature reserve plans. Welcome back to 10 News. And a man is tonight being questioned by police over the death of a Brisbane toddler. It's believed the 44-year-old friend of the little girl's family travelled to New South Wales before the toddler's body was found. Renee Henry has more. Kaisha Lee Joggin was just three years old, bright, bubbly, she loved to dance. But on a weekend she should have been hunting for Easter eggs, she was found dead at her North Brisbane home. Her smile would brighten up her day. In low her 20s life. and then the sun's set to come out again on Thursday and we've got a warm weekend coming up. I'll have the full forecast at 5.55. Thanks, Melanie. Coming up, the high-tech program bringing new hope to stroke sufferers in the bush. And footage emerges of a fight between a robber and a shop owner in Sydney.
back to 10 News. A fish shop owner has described how he was tied up and had a gun shoved in his face as he was robbed of his bumper Easter takings. The terrifying attack in Sydney was captured on security cameras and witnessed by the owner's pet bird, Snapper, who was clearly distraught. With a gun a couple of inches from your face, I think... Is he actually going to pull it? You know, you kept threatening him with it. But uh, yeah. in regional Victoria. It's an investment in technology that's proving its worth. David Woodward, 10 News. Now, Stephen's back with the latest on Monday Night Sport. Thank you, Mel. Another thrilling conclusion to a Hawks-Cats blockbuster. The highlights from the MCG next. The Demons dust themselves off after their Port Adelaide disaster. Doubting Thomas, a kangaroo controversially cleared by the match review panel. Kelly Slater and Joel Parkinson knocked out of Bells. And the false start which handed a little-known Tasmanian Australia's richest foot race. Good evening everyone. Geelong has staged yet another comeback over arch-rival Hawthorne coming from five goals down to hit the front midway through the last quarter at the MCG. Approaching full time, the Cats appear set for a tenth straight win over the Hawks as the Kennet curse shows no sign of ending. Roger Aldridge has the highlights. Football's fiercest modern day rivals at it again. Friendly fire was an early concern for the Cats. Selwood landed a blow on Christensen. The Hawks. Press standards and the sheepish Dane had to make a dainty dash to mark his ball <laughs> and allow others to putt out. Barefoot in his jocks is well and truly mal good enough for our play of the day. And the Cats have made it 10 in a row against the Hawks, winning by seven points in another great game at the MCG. See you tomorrow. Can't imagine what it must be like to have a football team win. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Checking weekend Oz Lotto results. And one lucky Division I winner is $4.2 million richer. Division II returns $13,000. Division III pays $1,300. Division IV, $36. Division V, $25.25. And uh, there's another one there, 1345. What was that? How far did I get? Uh, Division, Division 6 or 7? Yeah. I'm losing count. Well, no Super 66, so the prize pool will jackpot. Time for another look at the traffic. Here's Emma in the chopper. Thanks a lot, Mal. Well, as Steve mentioned, footy has wrapped up at the G. There'll certainly be mass, mass exodus. Still plenty in the car park. Not too bad at this stage on Hunt Road and Hoddle Street, but that will certainly bank up shortly. Can't spot any hold-ups getting through town on Flinders, Spencer or King Street, which is great news. Extra traffic through those holiday spots, but all the major arterials through Melbourne are looking pretty clear. An easy 17 minutes on the Tullamarine Freeway out to Melbourne Airport and no problems on the Princess Freeway in either direction. Hope you have a great night. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Emma. Melanie back after the break with all the weather details and uh, believers gather en masse to hear the new Pope's Easter message of peace. Welcome back and Pope Francis has made a passionate plea for peace in his first Easter address as pontiff. He focused in particular on conflicts in Iraq, Syria and more recently the tension between North and South Korea. May disagreements be overcome and a renewed spirit of reconciliation grow. A quarter of a million people packed into the Vatican's St. Peter Square for the Easter Sunday Mass. This weather report proudly brought to you by Mortine NatureGuard Automatic Odorless for continuous odorless protection. And now for her last time, Mike's back tomorrow. Here's Melanie with the weather. Thank you, Mal. Good evening again. Well, it was a mostly dry and cloudy day, but that cloud will increase throughout the night and we can expect some showers in the early hours of tomorrow morning. We've reached our top of 20 degrees around 2.30 this afternoon. And sunny again over the weekend, heading for 28 degrees. And Mal, according to the Weather Bureau, this month should be hotter and drier than average. The hot spell is set to kick in again on Thursday, but tonight brings my spell to an end. Mike will be back tomorrow. Thank you, Melanie. Nice to have had you with us. That's 10 News for now. Good night.